thanks for tuning in to this week's edition of The Lake Report. I'm Katie Sartoris, the community editor with The Daily Commercial, and of course your host here at Lakefront TV. We've got a lot to cover over the next half hour, so let's get started with some headlines from this week's news. First, some COVID-19 vaccination news. More than 256,000 people in Lake and Sumter counties have gotten at least one of the COVID-19 vaccine shots. As more people get the vaccine, the number of cases are dropping dramatically. Still need your vaccine? You don't even need an appointment anymore. The Lake Square Mall is open for walk-in second dose shots of the Pfizer vaccine through May 25th. Publix, CVS, Walgreens, Sam's Club, Winn-Dixie, and Walmart have also started offering walk-ins. We've got mask news. Lake County Schools Superintendent Diane Cornegay announced that the district plans to make masks optional for students and staff starting June 8th for summer programming. Same goes for the 2021-2022 school year. However, in her letter to parents, Cornegay said that masks will be required through the regular 2021 school year, which ends in just a couple weeks. And the salute section of the Daily Commercial will feature Matt Shaw, an Army veteran and athlete with a pastor's heart. You won't want to miss this story on the faith leader from Apopka. A cyber attack on the Colonial Pipeline affected gas supply all over the country this week. But it wasn't the pipeline limiting the supply in Florida and Lake County, it was panic buying. News of the cyber attack and potential shortages inspired people to swarm gas stations, leading to long lines and empty fuel pumps. Late Wednesday, the pipeline came back online, restoring supply to the southeast. It's that time of the year again. The Leesburg Lightning season is starting on June 5th, but the team is looking for a few more host families for its players. Host families are expected to provide players with at least one meal a day, a place to sleep and shower, and access to do laundry. If you're interested in helping out, contact the team's host family coordinator, Aaron Bertoft at 352-455-0583. Our reporting continues on the Moat Morris House as construction comes to an end. In the coming days, you'll see some in-depth stories on the Leesburg landmark in the paper and on dailycommercial.com. We'll explore the iconic home's history, talk to one of its former residents, and tell you all about the grand opening. Plus, stay tuned to special programming here on Lakefront TV to follow the historic home's transformation by logging on to Lakefront TV's YouTube channel. And of course, for more news, keep an eye on our website and like us on Facebook. Switching gears, Create Conservatory in Leesburg showcased female entrepreneurs at their strong women in small business market. From jewelry to dog treats, these women have worked hard to build their businesses, which is something to be celebrated. Here's correspondent Cindy Peterson with the story. Create Conservatory, a new STEM arts integration school in Leesburg, hosted a Strong Women in Small Business Expo on Saturday, showing their support for female entrepreneurs in the community. Women Helping Women is a passion for the school's founder, Nikki Duslack, who knows what it's like to have strong business women in her corner. The Strong Women in Small Business Expo was sort of born out of this opportunity for people to be able to come out and people who are maybe a little less comfortable with COVID to be able to be outside and visit vendors at booths and walk around. And it was born out of this idea of really being able to support other small businesses that were run by women in the community and a chance for us all to come together and not only network together as businesses, but to promote small business within the community and, and really enhance those relationships within the community. So we have almost 20 vendors here today and they represent everything from jewelry and t-shirts to community services. We have Eustis Parks and Recreation here today. So services that help the community as well as goods, things that you can buy. We have a, a natural beauty line that's here today with beauty products and just a really lot of amazing stuff. I'm actually wearing, I think, half of what people are selling here. I keep going around buying things and then just putting it on. So um, lots of really great, amazing women here today. The event featured around 20 small business owners in a wide variety of industries and was especially good for those newer businesses who have had a hard time getting off the ground through the pandemic. Well, I'm new to the area, so it helps me to get out word of mouth, you know, and it helps me promote my business. So this is great. I love the opportunity that she's giving all of the locals here to come together and do this mini expo. It gets the word out, it gets the business out, and it gets people shopping again with locals you know, making sure they grow their business. 
have a business that is uh, Tulo 12 and it's a family business. It started, you know, with the pandemic, with the idea of getting my 13 year old out of the house with, you know, her anxiety and her uh, mental issues that, you know, now it's, it's a daily uh, battle and daily situation is life. So um, we started in October uh, together and uh, she's been doing great in adding this particular uh, product for the Create Conservatory is a great idea uh, because we help organize. We help with school, we help with any way that you can possibly think of. Um, and this is a great idea to be here outdoors, you know, just showing the community that there's options out there. From art to beauty products, the expo showcased a variety of talents from those in our own community. About um, a year and a half ago, I started realizing that I wanted certain types of jewelry that just wasn't out there. Um, I like natural stones and I like, you know, a plain beaded bracelet and a stud earring and they just didn't have that out there and I knew that was what I wanted to wear so I decided I'm going to start making them and that's what I did. I started making them and I started networking and here we are a year and a half later and I have my own small business. The expo has definitely helped us out. Um, I'm getting my name out there. I think it's helping all of these women out in their small businesses. A great organization and a great group to have and come to show your product. Um, I create my own product, so it's very important for me to be out in front of people and to show what I do because just showing it on a website, it's not the same thing as coming and picking it up and holding it. But Nikki's idea to get all business women together, it helps us to support each other. Some of us have more experience in business than others, and this way we can also help each other and answer questions. So if someone is a novice in a business, I'm not a novice, so I can answer some questions that they might not know and they don't have to pay somebody. To, uh, to do it. So it's kind of supporting each other and that way it, it helps a lot. Supporting small business was what this expo was all about and Nikki said she hopes to do it again. One of the reasons that we wanted to do the Strong Women in Small Business Expo was because I think that now more than ever it's really paramount that women support one another and build one another up and I think for me it was about providing the community that opportunity to come out and support small business. I think a lot of shop owners um, have suffered obviously during the pandemic. People maybe aren't ready to walk into a storefront but an outdoor market might be something that people are a little more comfortable with and so it was sort of born from this desire to support the community and support women because women were behind Create Conservatory. Um, it, was, it was really this small band of women that joined together as this force to bring our service to the community. And so it was kind of a way for us to give back to women in this community and support one another. Reporting for Lakefront TV, I'm Cindy Peterson. What a great event. Congratulations to all these female entrepreneurs. Well done. When we come back, we travel to Umatilla, Florida to explore a veteran-based farm that's growing and harvesting hops for local breweries. We'll be right back. Welcome back to The Lake Report. We hope you're enjoying our series. If you have a show idea, shoot us an email to lakefront at leesburgflorida.gov. Also, be sure to follow and like our social media pages. St. John's Hops in Umatilla has a unique story of employing veterans diagnosed with PTSD and utilizing their skills through horticulture therapy. The group mainly focuses on growing and harvesting hops, which are then sold to local breweries to keep the program going. Here's more about this amazing project. My name is Sebastian Lajeunesse. I'm the owner and founder of St. John's Hops, and today is harvest time. St. John's Hops is named after the beautiful river that flows north and right, right through our beautiful state. And we are a company that's dedicated to hiring combat veterans who struggle with PTSD for them to work here in a therapeutic environment to help them cope with their trauma and also for good pay to help them get back on their feet. And we grow hops for uh, the microbrewery industry. Uh, for example, this harvest today is for Crooked Can Brewing over in Winter Garden. Okay, so this is what a hops looks like. And now when you rip it up, well, so you'll see some yellow powder in the center. So that's called the lupulin. That's what gives the beer the aroma and the flavor. 
and so depending on, on the what kind of style or what, what kind of flavor that the brewmaster is going for well so they'll choose a, a specific variety of a uh, hop so for example here we have cascade chinook comet columbus and so this right here is a comet and it smells a lot like grapefruit with tropical aromas and chinook which is my personal favorite uh, it smells a lot of pine after uh, Seven years in the Marine Corps Infantry with two combat deployments, uh, I was given a medical retirement from the Marine Corps due to I injuries sustained in combat. And um, I immediately went to work for, um, for um, a food distribution company as a sales rep. And I did that for about a year, but I was struggling with my PTSD issues uh, from Afghanistan. and. Uh, and also I wanted to be able to go to school and use my GI Bill. So my dad had offered me to work part-time for his company, Agro Research, while going to school over at UCF. And it was while working for his company, I would test uh, s several of his organic products on different crops and plants like tomatoes, strawberries, corn. After testing my dad's organic products on a few hops plants uh, I learned that not only did the products work well but also the hops grew well here too and um, and so that's when uh, last year we had decided to start a small little hops field just to see if that was something that we can grow and sell commercially and then we did two successful collaborations with a couple local breweries in the state and and uh, they love the quality of the hops and uh, they love the fact that it was grown right here in Florida with organic products. And then so that's when uh, this past fall was when we uh, purchased uh, a 15 acre um, abandoned orange grove here in Umatilla. And, uh, and then when we decided to start this um, large project, uh, I told my dad that I wanted this to be vet veteran operated. Um, so um, I decided to turn this into a veterans healing farm where we hire combat vets with a PTSD for them to work here in a therapeutic environment. And yeah, and so now I have three veterans working for me now. Uh, one um, being a Vietnam era veteran and, and they're happy here. They love it here. Uh, it's a brotherhood here and it's just a great time. When he came home about four years ago from the Marine Corps, he struggled to acclimate um, he really wasn't talking much to me about what he was going through, so there was this miscommunication and um, he started working at his father's farm and came into hops growing and really kind of found a niche that helped calm him and helped kind of just quiet his mind a little bit. And um, he came home one day and said, you know, this is what I want to do. I have this idea. I think I can help other veterans like myself and help them acclimate and just find peace and um, it kind of just snowballed from there. I served in the army four years. Uh, I was an infantryman, 11 Bravo. I was stationed in Fort Carson, Colorado. and I got deployed to Mosul, Iraq for 15 months and when I came back I was diagnosed with PTSD. Working here at the farm really helps me to deal with all of my problems and being around my brothers here is amazing. It helps out a lot. Did you know that horticulture therapy was embraced in the 1940s and 50s following World War II and the Korean War? According to the American Horticultural Therapy Association, it was an effective way to rehabilitate hospitalized war veterans. The power of nature and working outdoors. From the cha-cha to the tango, when we come back, an up-close interview with professional dancer Anastasia Abramenko. We have her story next on The Lake Report. Welcome back to The Lake Report, your connection with your community. On our next report, we make a stop at Anastasia Ballroom in Leesburg, where professional dancer Anastasia Abramenko uses her skills from traveling the world as a competition ballroom dancer to inspire a love for dance. Let's take a look. 
We're here at Anastasia Ballroom and Dance Studio in Leesburg, where Anastasia Abramenko offers her expertise in ballroom dance. Anastasia began dancing at the age of six in her home country of Russia, before traveling the world as a competitive ballroom dancer. My father is a ballet master, so I kind of repeated everything after people and his dance ensemble. And, um, and then at about uh, when I was five, my mom insisted that I start dance and my dad was like, no way, because <laughs> it's very harsh uh, the way they teach in Russia. And, um, and then finally my mom was like, well, what about ballroom dancing instead of ballet? And then finally my dad, once he saw what it was, and uh, I started my uh, dancing. Uh, and then when I was about eight years old, I uh, did my first dance competition and from there on I started traveling uh, Europe and Russia, different competitions and then when I was 13 years old, about so, at my own school where I studied, uh, my grandmother was a dance teacher, she gave me one of her classes and those kids that were just two years younger than me and I was teaching them. <laughs> Although she was able to pursue her love of dance in Russia, it was Anastasia's dream to come to America. When I was 14 years old, 1999, uh, my parents uh, made my dream come true to come to USA for a uh, ballroom dance championship, USDC. It's one of the most prestigious dance competitions in US and uh, we attended. And after this dance competition, my parents decided to stay. <laughs> and uh, it was challenging because we came with just two bags for three people and one bag was just uh, da uh, dance dresses. Um, so, and we did quite well at the dance competition and from there on, uh, just did a, a lot of dancing in the States, uh, different dance competitions. And then when I was about uh, 17, I uh, got a job as a dance instructor at a franchi franchise dance studio, Fred Astaire. And I worked there for about a year and I got an amazing uh, training there. And, uh, and then uh, probably since I was 19, I started teaching independently. Uh, and then about um, 10 years ago now, I was invited to teach in Leesburg and that's how I put my feet here into Leesburg. Almost seven years ago, her parents fulfilled another dream of hers and gifted her with her own studio to share her love of dance with others. Her parents, who are professional dancers that have been in the industry for more than 40 years, are still involved with teaching and running the studio. So we offer private lessons uh, mostly. Of course, we do offer group classes as well, and this year has been kind of funky for everybody. So people are getting a little bit more comfortable with group classes. Uh, so we do ballroom group classes once a week on Tuesday nights at seven o'clock. On Wednesday mornings at 11 o'clock, dad teaches bar class, which is modified ballet uh, to improve posture and uh, just core strength and everything. Um, and uh, also we offer practice parties and those are fun. So basically we get together once a month. We usually do a theme and uh, we start with uh, dinner. Everybody brings a dish to share and then we teach a 30-minute group class, make sure everybody meets one another, we do very easy steps, and then we just practice the dancing, so we just party, so it's, it's a lot of fun. The studio teaches ballroom classics like the Foxtrot, Cha-Cha, Salsa, Quick Step, and Tango, as well as ballet and swing dance. For more information, visit AnastasiaBallroom.com. Reporting for Lakefront TV, I'm Cindy Peterson. Thanks for that story, Cindy. If you would like more information about ballroom dancing, check out AnastasiaBallroom.com. Coming up next, we're on the search for the perfect scented candle. Explore a handmade candle shop right here in the heart of Leesburg. We'll be right back. Welcome back. It's now time to turn things over to our team over at Eustace High School Studio 126. Despite the challenges student Timothy Gilb has faced attending public school, the senior is aiming high and will be the first in his family to attend college. Studio 126 gave Tim an opportunity to showcase his talents and become a lead face on his high school show. Listen to his inspiring story on this week's Rutland Rundown. I'm your host, Rashawn Rutland, and you're watching The Rutland Rundown. On today's edition, we'll be speaking to Timothy Gilb, a student at Eustis High School and a member of Studio 126. So, Tim, tell us a little about yourself. 
Well, I'm Timothy William Gilb Jr. Uh, obviously, my father is senior. I am 18 years old. Main hobbies are usually just gaming at home, relaxing, helping around the house. And we know you're a member of Studio 126. Tell us what that's like. Well, honestly, I'm sad I only got to do it senior year. I would have loved to do it earlier, but, you know, I just never got around to thinking about... I didn't know what was really going on in here. You know, I watched Panther uh, Primetime when it came on in uh, Miss Spice class when I had her for a couple of years, but uh, I never realized it was this much fun. Uh, and, you know, I never thought I'd be that good on stage, but I guess I was. And let's check out a clip from the show. Congratulations to the Lady Panthers volleyball team on a great senior night, went over Palatka High School. All four seniors had an amazing night on the court. Leading the pack was Mighty Mo Morgan Rally with six kills at the net. Kayla Colbert with five service aces and four kills herself. Laura Verkike earning her team eight points throughout the night. And Ali Bobbitt with an astonishing 22 digs in the backcourt. Great job, ladies. So what's your plans in the future like, Tim? And what college do you plan on attending? Uh, well, I'm a little undecided on where I want to actually go, but I'm going through the Bright Future program to uh, get, uh, I believe it was 100% free for two years at a local college or 75% off a bigger one that's like out of state. Uh, so I'm trying to get through that. I got to do a couple more things, but I'm like right there. So it doesn't, I'm going to get it. So what's something a lot of people don't know about you? Well, it's a little hard to tell, but I am on the autism spectrum, uh, Asperger's specifically. I am pretty high function, and, you know, I'm not on, like, disability or anything anymore. You know, high function doesn't change much about me. I'm just Tim. And around school, we know that you're one of the main faces of Panther Primetime. Tell us, do you have any plans for pursuing that in the future? A future in media? Well, um, it's definitely a thought. I w my main uh, goal is to get into stuff like sociology, philosophy, stuff like that. So if I go into that, I could at some point maybe become yeah. a spokesperson, have a YouTube channel, something along those lines, and speak my ideas. That's something that could certainly happen. I could also just be an editor for some branch of stuff like that. You know, it's there's definitely a lot of things where uh, talking about stuff and technology come into play, as you can see here. And Tim, we'd love to hear that great announcer voice of yours. Do you mind showing it to us? <laughs> What's up, Lake County? I'm your guest, Tim, and you're watching the Rutland Rundown. Thank you, Tim, for your time, and we'll see you guys next time on the Rutland Rundown. We want to thank Timothy for sharing his inspirational story with us. We wish him the very best. Are you looking for a local business that makes homemade candles? We are all about loving where you live and supporting local. On this week's Small Business Feature, we explore Made Candle Shop in downtown Leesburg. Check it out. We are at Madey Candle, located on Mike Street in Leesburg, where owner Tiffany Portier makes and sells her signature handmade candles and other aromatherapy creations. Hi, I'm Tiffany Portier. I am the owner of My Day Candle. I am here located on Mike Street in a historical building. I make handmade candles, handmade wax melts, um, handmade linen and room sprays. I got into making candles. First of all, I love candles. Um, been strolling through um, YouTube one day and it popped up and I watched the video and I was like, hey, I can do that. So um, I started making candles um, just, you know, to have around the house. Um, and then one day my sister was like, these smell awesome. You should sell these. So um, we have church events. Um, I introduced them to um, family and friends there and they love them. And they also encouraged me to, um, I should sell. Tiffany creates many of her own scents with essential oils and assembles each candle for her storefront and online orders. So now we're here in um, the back part of the shop and this is where I um, make my candles. So um, what I do first is I weigh out my um, container that I'm going to put my wax in. So I have a um, wax um, um, machine that melts my wax. 
so um, because I do this you know quite often each jar um, is measured different um, of wax that I use so this so it won't drip on the floor so I come and measure out my wax this type of jar I usually use about maybe um, five you know 0.5 5.0 so um, once I get that weighed out then I um, have my scent and this is um, Mediterranean fig that I am using and I stir so I already have my jar here set up with my um, wick in it so you wanna I stir my wax in my scent up and I pour And then I just let this sit. Once it starts to um, kind of harden, I will come and, you know, fix up my wick or whatever. And I usually just let it sit overnight um, and just finish the process the next day. So that's how I um, make my candles. With more than 30 different scents, Tiffany says that there's a scent for everyone to enjoy. Here I have my um, Pineapple Crush. It is, um, like a tropical mango-like smell that I um, make. And it's one of my um, popular scents that I sell here. Another the one that's my popular, which is my signature scent, is Tiffany Blue. It's a very relaxing scent. It's like a sm spa-like smell scent, um, but it's very popular. And again, it's my signature scent. So of course, you know, it very, smells very sweet. And I have another one. It is um, Caribbean Blue. It's a more masculine scent. Um, another one of my um, popular scents um, that I sell. I think it's important for um, people to support our local businesses to help support our community. Check out Madey Candle at 207 Mike Street in Leesburg or visit madeycandle.com. I heard they have some amazing scents. Gotta check it out. Well, that's all the time you have left. We really hope you're enjoying our show. Thanks for all the show ideas. Keep them coming to lakefront at leesburgflorida.gov. Until next time, get out and explore. Experience the beautiful lakefront city we call home. See you next time.